Okay, here we go. We're going to do the device active for part one, the coming of Grendel. So I've got the uh, activity open. Uh, I also want to open up the story itself. So I'm going to go to Beowulf, read and annotate. You guys have a copy of this yourselves. I'm going to open up this a little slow. I've got a little lag going on here. I'm going to open up my notes. Okay, so that should open up my story. And what I like to do is I would like to divide my screen between project and the story. I'm going to take the devices activity and I'm going to put it on another screen. Put the story over here on this screen. Okay, so the first thing we're looking for, part one, we're finding examples of the first literary device, which is alliteration. Alliteration is where they take the beginning uh, syllable or consonant sound and repeat it over and over and over again, repeating an S or an L or a T. So your job is to go find some examples of alliteration in the story. So here, let's see if we can find some. Here we have day after day the music rang. So why don't I... See if I can open this with Cami and see if I can highlight it in a certain color just for alliteration. Come on, Mr. Cami, open up. Sorry for the delay home on my Wi-Fi. Okay, so I will turn on a highlighter. I will make it about, yeah, about halfway. And then I will choose a color for highlighting. Why don't we choose... Uh, Let's see, we will highlight the alliterations in a nice yellow. Okay, let's see if it's highlighting in yellow. Nope, oh, still highlighting in red. There it is, there's the yellow. There we go. Okay. So we're looking for uh, uh, alliteration. And I can highlight here where it says day after day. There's two D's in a row. So we can find more. Here we have the harp's rejoicing call and the poet's clear songs. We have the C and the C. And then here we have the proudly setting the sun and moon. We have the S being repeated. And to glow across the land, land and light it. Okay. 
Here we have the monster spawned in that slime, a repeat of the letter S. And so what you'll do is you will choose one of these. Let's say we chose uh, spawned in that slime. And let's see if we can actually even select it. Let's see if this works. Spawned in that slime and copy it. And we'll put it over here in the quote mark. Yep, and the explanation here is um, what I'm noticing with this is if I say he was spawned in that slime, uh, I have a repeat of the letter S. Why is it not typing? Oh, there it goes. Repeat of the letter S gives it a snake quality. Okay, the repeat of the letter S gives it a snake quality, which adds to the evil. Okay, he was spawned in that slime. So that's what you're doing. You're going through and you're trying to find as many examples of alliteration as you can. And then you are explaining them. So let me see if I can find a few more examples for you in case you need some more. So uh, okay. conceived. Conceived by monsters born of Cain, murderous creatures. We have the repeat of the letter C. Uh, when uh, Grendel went up to here, here he was wondering. What the warriors would do. He went. Right? Notice all those repeat of the W sound. And what did he find? He found them sprawled in sleep, suspecting nothing. And what does he do? He snatched up 30 men and smashed them down. And ran out delighted with the slaughter. Repeat of the S sound. Here, 12 winners, Hrothgar the king heaped, sorrow heaped at his door by hell-forged hands. But Hrothgar's heart the heathens only hope. Okay, so you get the point. You're gonna to go to alliteration. 
you're going to find repeats of consonant sounds, and then you're going to try to write about what they might mean. Not only what is the sound, but what might it mean. Okay, next, kennings. Why don't we change our color on the kennings? We'll do the alliteration in, in yellow, and we'll do the kennings in a different color. Why don't we go to, uh, let me see, uh, first off, I'll highlight the uh, alliterations in yellow, bam, there we go. Okay, and then why don't we choose to do our kennings in a different color. We'll change them to, uh, let's go we already have pink going on, so why don't we go blue? Okay, so the kennings will be in blue. Make the kennings over here in blue. We have them in a... Uh, a blue color like that. There we go. Okay, Kennings. We did a Kenning activity. Kennings are imaginative phrases used used instead of a noun. All right, so they're like little metaphors. You're using a phrase, a couple of words to describe something instead of saying what it is you subjecting you are su suggesting the characteristics that go with that noun. So we're going to look for some kennings, make this a little bit smaller. I'll go back over here into the story, looking for kennings. My story is uh, scrolling the wrong way. There, I'm up at the top. Okay. Okay, and we're... Okay, we have a powerful monster. Looking for a canning. I got one. Mankind's enemy. Right here. Mankind's enemy is Grendel. So over here in your example, you'll say mankind's enemy. Is actually Grendel. how e evil he is because he's against man. So 
we can find some more. Oh, here they're talking about the old stone gods. Those are the pagan gods. Okay, which implies that they are not as spiritual as their newer Christian god. And here they have the Lord of heaven and earth. That's their description of God. Here's another one, Heath Dane's son, instead of calling him Hrothgar. And here another one, Higlak's follower, that's Beowulf. Okay, that's the best I could do for Kennings. So let's go on Kennings with those metaphors, the multiple word phrases. A synecdoche. Synecdoche. Synecdoche is a figure of speech when one part is used to describe the whole. So if you talked about a person's brain to talk about the entire person, instead of saying, you know, Joe did such and such, you would say the brain did such and such, All right? So you use a part to describe the whole. So let's find a new color to highlight these in. We already did pink. We already did this bluish color. Let's go back to the palette. Let's see if we can find something. Uh, oh, a nice green. How about we go with a nice green? Save that. And so if we go here, there's a nice green. Okay, so we're going to go green. So synecdoche is going to be done in green. So let me go under normal text. I like this in green. There's a nice green. Okay, so we're looking for a part to represent the whole. This potentially is one right here, where the corners of the earth were made lovely. Okay, really they weren't just talking about just the corners, the entire earth.
sure that this is really a synecdoche, but Herod itself, the Mead Hall, really is representing the entire country, how the country is in. Oh, here, hell forged hands. Okay, was it just the hands that did the damage? The entire monster did the damage, not just his hands. And his misery was sung in all men's ears. So they heard it. They didn't just hear it with their ears. No one waited for reparation from his plundering claws. The fact that he's a shadow of death. Shadow of death is more of one of our, uh, our kennings, isn't it? We should make that one blue. Oh, here one. Hrothgar's heart is bent. Okay, it wasn't just his heart that felt something. His entire body felt something. He made a decision. Hell was always in their hearts. Okay, it's not just in their heart. They feel this, this pagan belief. So their belief in their pagan gods isn't just in their hearts. And again, their ears could not hear his praise. So it's not just that they, their ears can't hear it, they can't know it. They can't know it in their hearts. They can't know it in their minds. Carry no solace in your hearts. I'm not looking, I'm not finding any fabulous examples of synecdoches. Okay, so that's it for Synecdoches. We should put the first one in, the corners of the earth. We should type that one in here. And that's talking about how the entire earth was created built in life. okay not just the corners all right what other thing do we have a caesura it's a pause within a line these are easy to find Okay, let's see what kind of color we can come up with for highlighting. Pauses in a line. Something's going wrong with my... Let's go with... Uh, let's go with some kind of pink. I already have pink. Little green. Let's go with a purple. Okay, so Caesaras are going to be done in purple. So let's make them purple over here.
I like in a nice purple. Okay, we're just looking for pauses. Okay. Obviously, anytime we have a um, a comma, it might be a pause. All right. So any one of these commas could be could be considered a caesura. Okay. Any time where um, there's a big pause in the in the um, in the poetry, let's see if we can find one here where he's attacking or something. The monster's thoughts were as quick as his greed or his claws. Pause right there. He slipped through the door, and there in the silence, snatched up thirty men. Pause right there. Smashed them unknowing in their beds and ran out with their bodies. Pause right there. The blood dripping behind him, back to his lair, delighted with his night slaughter. Pause right here. At daybreak, with the sun's first light, they saw how well he had worked, and in that gray morning they broke their long fears with tears and laments for the dead. Pause right there. Hrothgar, their lord, sat joyless in Herod. Pause right there. A mighty prince mourning the fate of his lost friends and companions. Pause right there. Knowing by his tract that some demon had torn his followers apart, he wept. Pause. Fear in the beginning might not be the end. Pause. All right. So there are so many caesuras, and uh, some are more formal than others. Sometimes they actually break the poetry. And they actually show you in the poetry by breaking the poetry and showing uh, where there is a, a large break, any one of these ones where it looks like they wrote a paragraph. Right? They put them in there on purpose. Sometimes they even start a line and then show you that it should uh, have a big break by pushing the rest of it down onto the next line. So any one of those for Cesaros. Epic language, epic language is any big language. We're talking about um, uh, uh, these old stories that would uh, um, be very long stories, and they would be about uh, very large uh, concepts and large ideas, and um, even uh, um, even kings and queens and people that were larger than life, gods. Uh, I'm looking for a color here while I'm at it. Here, green we've used, yellow we've used. We haven't used an orange yet. Let's go with an orange. Okay, so we'll go with orange. Epic, epic language, we'll go with, with orange. Okay, so we're looking for really big language. Okay, um, the fact that they're using monsters, that's an epic concept. That did not go uh, the right color. Why did it not go the right color? Let's try this again. Orange. Let's see. Monster. There we go. Um, Going back to the ancient beginnings, uh, going back to uh, concepts of God, um, let's see what else we have.
the fact that uh, hate had triumphed. So we need goodness to come and win. It may take a long time in an epic story for goodness to win. But we have rulers, kings, we have evil ruling right now. The fact that it's not just one battle, but it's a war. It's ongoing for a long period of time. fact that we have a king, epics often have nobles. The fact that the agony that they are in goes on unending forever and ever is a long battle. And of course, now what do we have? We have a hero coming to save them. It's part of a uh, epic, and the fact that he has to sail across the sea—it's a journey. Epics are often involve a journey, and they invite involve bravery. So anything that you can find that makes this story bigger than life. You know, longer than just a simple story, anything that involves, uh, um, you know, warriors and kings and uh, God, uh, good winning over evil, um, anything like that, anything that's talking about uh, uh, darkness and light, these are all epic concepts. You're going to put them in there as examples of epic language. Okay, I think that we have uh, taped for long enough. Let's see if we.